All right, welcome to our very first lesson of genetics, and I'm entitling it Why You Look the Way You Do, which is, I guess, one of the major ideas of genetics that we're going to get into. So this slide here will essentially give you most of the main vocabulary that you're going to need moving forward in genetics. You're going to see the way I structure it is the first definition of a word kind of comes up script, which is like the official definition. So that one I would definitely write down. And then underneath it, I have it in print, which is my version of like a simplified way to view it. You're welcome to write that way down, or you just kind of use that to help you understand it. It's completely up to you. But obviously, your goal is to make sure you know these vocabulary words so you're able to use them throughout the rest of the unit. So here we go. So the first vocabulary word we're going to talk about is phenotype. And I want you to focus on that first two letters, PH, because that's how I remembered it, because phenotype is like physical. And what it is, is it's, oops, it's the physical characteristics of an organism. So most simply put, it's what you look like. So a phenotype is just characteristics of an object, or a living anything, I suppose. They can also be called traits. So sometimes you hear them called traits, sometimes you hear them called phenotypes. So some examples are tall or brown hair, or if you're talking about maybe plants, it's uh, purple flowers or white flowers. These are called traits, um, or the phenotype, what it physically looks like, basically what you can see. So if you look here, our good friend SpongeBob, some phenotypes, if I ask you to think about it. So what I'd say right now is just pause it for a second and then try to think of some phenotypes of SpongeBob, then I'll go through a bunch. So go ahead and pause it. Okay, hopefully you actually paused it. So some of the phenotypes would be blue eyes, it could be freckles, uh, it could be square head or square body, I suppose, or square pants. Um, it could be his, his, the shape of his smile or the fact that he has two teeth or big eyes. These are all phenotypes, just physical characteristics of a living organism. And the phenotypes kind of, we'll say partner, is the genotype. And you may have seen that word gene before when you deal with genetics. It's kind of obviously in that word as well, genetics. But what this is, is the genetic makeup of an organism that are found in your cells. So in your cells are these like code, these, um, I guess, clues or whatever. But we'll say code. It's the code that tells your body to look a certain way. So the way I said it is the code inside of you. So each phenotype, each physical characteristic has a certain code that makes you look the way it does. So I'll give you some examples here. You're going to see them written like this, like a big H and a little h. Big H, big H, or a little h, little h. And I know that seems kind of weird to have random letters, but that's an example of a genotype. is two letters next to each other with the exact same letters, either both capital, both lowercase, or one uppercase and one lowercase. So when you write it, just so you know, the capital letter always goes first. If it's like a big H, little h, you always put the capital letter first. But those are examples of genotypes. They'll make more sense in a little bit. A genotype is made up of two alleles, one from each parent. So alleles is the next vocabulary word. So basically, you get one letter from mom and one from dad. So like we just said in the previous slide, a big H and a little h, a little h and a little h. Each of those letters is called an allele. And in that code, big H, little h, or little h, little h, one of those letters you got from your mom, one of those letters you got from your dad. So for each genotype you have, the reason you have two letters is because you have a mom and a dad who created you, so you got each one of each of their letters. Some of these alleles are dominant, and some are recessive. Dominant ones are written as a capital letter whereas recessive ones are written as a lowercase letter. So we'll get a little bit more into this as well. Oops, we're going to skip this one for now. I'm sorry. All right. If there's one or more dominant allele in the genotype, then your phenotype will represent that allele. That sentence probably sounds extremely confusing with all these fancy words. So, simplified, if there's a capital letter, in your genotype, you'll look like whatever that capital letter stands for. Again, this will make more sense in a little bit. All right, so let's take a look here. So let's just say for our sake of our demonstration that a big T stands for tall and a lowercase t stands for short. So then, all right, sorry, I had to pause it for a second. So 
I may repeat myself. So in our situation, capital T stands for tall and lowercase letter stands um, for short. So if someone's genotype was this, this was their code that was in their body, big T, big T, then they would be tall because, well, there is a capital letter T in it. And if it's a big T and a little t, even though there's one of each letter, the capital T is the dominant one because it's the capital letter, so you'd still be tall. So this is one of the key concepts that we um, learned from Mendel, is that it, you don't just blend. You don't have a capital and lowercase, so you end up medium height. You just end up becoming the one that's the dominant trait. But if your genotype is little t, little t, so you don't have any capital letters, well, then you're short because you don't have the dominant trait to overpower it. So this is a very important um, data table to really make sure you understand. Let's go the other way for a sec. Let's say capital F stands for fast, and lowercase f stands for slow, as, as if that could possibly be really a characteristic, but we're going to go with it. So if you are slow, what I want you to try to think of right now is what could your possible genotype be? So hopefully you have some letters in your head. Is it big F, big F, big F, little F, little F, little F? So if you're slow, you have to be little F, little F. That's the only way you can end up slow. And if you're fast, you have two possibilities. You could be capital F, capital F, or you could be capital F, lowercase f. Because as long as there's a capital letter in it, you're going to end up looking or having that trait. All right, our last two vocabulary words we need to get into here. Some genotypes are homozygous, also called purebred. And what that means is that both alleles are the same. And by the same, I don't mean the same letter. I mean the same as in both capital or both lowercase. So for example, big G, big G, or little g, little g, those are examples of homozygous genotypes. The prefix homo means the same. So if you remember that, you can remember they are the same, both capital or both lowercase, homozygous genotype. And the other one is called a heterozygous genotype, and the prefix hetero means different. And these are also sometimes called hybrid which means alleles are different. So for example, big G, little g, because you have one capital and one lowercase. This is called a heterozygous genotype, where you have a dominant one and a recessive one. So that basically takes us through the lesson. So at this point now, I know you learned a lot of different vocabulary words, but I'm hoping that you could identify if I ask you, what is a genotype? What is a phenotype? What is an allele? What does heterozygous mean? What does homozygous mean? And I didn't even put on here, but what is dominant? What is recessive? Um, these are all the things that you just learned. So I know that's like seven different vocabulary words, but hopefully you can do it. So let's try it real quick. So I said, what is genotype? What I'll do is I'll pause for a second. Hopefully you can pause and, or just think of the answer, and then we'll see if you match up. So what is genotype? Genotype is the code inside your body, like big G, big G, or little g, little g. What is phenotype? Phenotype is the physical characteristic, so tall, thin, blue eyes, brown hair, things like that. What is an allele? An allele is just one of those letters, so big H, little h, the big H is an allele, the little h is an allele, and they both came one from each of your parents, one from mom, one from dad. What is heterozygous? Heterozygous is when you have a capital letter and a lowercase letter in the genotype. What is homozygous? Homozygous is when they're either both capital or both lowercase. And I didn't put on here what is dominant. Dominant is the capital letter, and if it has it in the genotype, you're going to end up looking like that. And what is recessive? That's the lowercase letter. And the only way you're going to look like that is if you have both lowercase letters. So review page number two. If I say big G is green and little g is yellow, if I say big G, little g, you should be able to tell me what color this flower would be, and it would be heterozygous or homozygous. So go ahead and think in your head or write it down, whatever you want. All right, so the color would be green because it has a big G in it, and big G is green. It would be heterozygous because these letters are different. And the last page of review we have is the same thing, only it was little g, little g. What color would the flower be? The flower would be yellow because they're both little g's and it would be homozygous because they're both the same. Yep. And we'll do this hopefully in class. I'll go back to the slide. 
So that wraps up the main vocabulary words. For something like this, it might be essential for you to rewatch a couple parts, rewind, whatever you need to. But ultimately, your objective is to be able to use these words interchangeably um, whenever you need to in class, because for the rest of genetics, we're going to end up using these vocabulary words. All right, um, so that sums up our very first lesson in genetics.